Right, so currently we're in um, June and uh, I'm in an eel fishing campaign. Eels love worms. So I thought I'd show you how we go about collecting what we call lobworms. Depending on where you are in the world, you might know them as night crawlers. Um, but they are really a, a fantastic bait for for most species of fish. But um, if you can get large quantities of them and fish them chopped up or baiting area with lots of lots of them, they certainly take some beating in terms of attracting eels. Now the easiest way to collect them is on a warm wet summer's evening just as we have here. Um, I've come to one of my local parks. You want somewhere where the grass is fairly short because uh, if they, if they sense any movement in the long grass with your feet or your hands when you go to collect them they will they will shoot away. Now the warmer and the wetter it is the more likely that um, you're going to be able to get more of them and in fact on nights where it's really warm and you've got a storm then often they'll actually just be uh, fully out of their burrows um, and even they'll be crawling all over the, the pavements but those nights are the exception most nights, certainly here in the UK, they're going to be like this. If it's wet, it's a little bit cold and miserable as well. So, let me show you how we go about collecting them. You don't want too bright a, a light uh, because they are, they are fairly skittish. A lot of animals predate on the worms, so they're sensitive to, to vibration and to light. What I'm going to do, I'm just running over, there's a, a fixed goal mouth over here where the, uh, the grass is worn away and uh, maybe the easiest place to start get a few easy worms so hopefully they'll show up better on the camera with no grass in the way although it is barked right there's one I don't know if you can see this but you've got the head and then you've got the tail poking down into the burrow it's important before you go for it you identify which end is the head because obviously once it senses danger it's going to shoot in the opposite direction so the thing to do is to get you or to to pinch it as close to the burrow as you're able to see like so and then gently pull it at the same angle as the burrow sometimes I take a little bit of twisting to find out and then usually they'll come out fairly easily they do have they feel kind of like barbs um, bristles on the flat end um, so sometimes they do stick into the burrows and you've got to be careful if you pull at the wrong angle or too hard um, they can snap they're no good then because then they will die and um, they'll, uh, they'll make the rest of the worms that you've collected uh, last a lot shorter time. There's another one there. So again, we're going to try and identify which end is the head. There we go. Oh, not not fast enough then. And there's another one. Look. Another one. They will shoot away if they sense 
your footsteps. There's another one just in front of us here. This one's a long way out, but it's just beginning to retract. What I tend to do, because they can be very sensitive to the footsteps, obviously we're walking as gently as we can, but often before, particularly you'll find that they, they tend to be concentrated in certain areas, before taking another step, I'll often look around and try and identify where one is. Otherwise what you'll find is that they know you're there before you know they're there and, and then of course they're gone. There's one there, but it might be quite difficult. It's just going back in. Okay, so it's got the head. Now these are a bit tricky, so what you can do if you've only got the head, ease it out, sort of walk your fingers down it. But on this one. But if you go gentle, they will succumb in the end. There she comes. There you go. You just got to not rush her, otherwise they will snap. Often, when you get down, you start to see a few. So rather than getting back up and scaring them, it's a good idea to be wearing waterproof trousers. Shuffle along. You'll often get quite a few from one spot. I don't know if you saw that one disappear, but there's one next to it that's still there. Now if you can see which end is the head. That one actually looks like it might have been broken by something. So look. sticking out so we'll give it a go. This one has just gone in half the way so it's poised. As I'm pulling this one out, I'm looking in front. There's one over here, it's just starting to go in. I got that one. And there's another. I don't know if you can see this. There's two side by side. So they're actually mating. And what I tend to do when they're doing that is I'll leave them. So that we've got plenty for next time we come. better. 
There's a bit of bark covering them, but there's two worms here. And uh, they're obviously involved in a little bit of worm love making. So we'll let them crack on. There's another one here though. That's fair game. Okay. I'm pulling this one out. There's one just in front of us. Now it's started to retract. I'm going to try and not put the torch on it full beam. So we can get it before she disappears. These are out when they're gripping on. You just tease them and they usually come. Now believe it or not, when I was a kid, I was petrified of the dark, couldn't go to bed unless my light was on for the whole hog and I got mad into fishing and then probably about 11 or 12 years old I started collecting worms and obviously that meant creeping around in the dark and uh, it's actually not unlike fishing and it's quite addictive and was a very effective cure and now I absolutely love the dark and in fact I'll often seek it out and they're a bit trickier in the grass uh, see where that one went that's because I shone the light on it too long but in the grass they will sense, so you've got to be quick. Fortunately, this grass hasn't been cut for a little while, so it's a bit too long. Makes seeing them a lot harder. Right, so we've come into an adjacent field, and this has obviously had its grass cut quite recently. So uh, he's a much better prospect. We'll see how we get on. Let's turn the torch down a little bit. Okay, there's one. Right, well, unfortunately, I made a schoolboy error and I didn't check that the camera was sufficiently charged before I went out to get the worms, but um, to be honest, how many worms you want me to see put out the ground anyway you've probably seen enough um, once I got out onto that mode uh, sports field then uh, the, the worms became much more numerous and uh, I'll take you in here I've probably got I'm not going to count them for you but um, I would say we've probably got three maybe 400 worms in there. And what I've done is I've just pulled out some of the long grass and uh, put that over them for now. When I get in they're going to go straight into the fridge. Uh, these lobworms they are quite hard to keep. Um, brandlings and dendrobenas etc. Uh, they're fairly easy to keep for many weeks even even months. Um, lobworms are a little bit more fragile and in fact I'll be using these um, all within the next couple of days. But um, I do, I do um, grow vegetables and, and fruits. I like chilies and strawberries, etc. So um, I've got plenty of seedling soil. So uh, if I was keeping them for any longer, I would uh, I'd mix them with uh, plenty of seedling soil. And then actually, when I've uh, finished with the worms, then I can use that seedling soil um, for its original purpose. So the main things to take away are um, you want to choose a, a warm. Um, and a wet night. Uh, the warmer and wetter it is, the easier you're going to find. The worms will be further out of their burrows um, and, and they'll be much easier to catch and they'll also be far more numerous. Um, you want to have uh, as short a grass as possible. Um, find a large open area, preferably away from street lighting. 
Um, aside from the fact that if you've got street lighting, you've got streets and uh, you're going to get some very weird looks and at the sort of time of night you need to be going out, um, you might get some unwanted attention as well. Um, but sports parks, so cricket pitches, football pitches, that sort of thing are, uh, are absolute, absolutely ideal. Um, when you do get the worms, do try and remember to identify which one is the head and which one is the tail. Obviously in the first instance they're going to shoot backwards, um, so the further you get them down the tail the easier they're going to be to pull out. But also um, all the vital organs are really from the saddle end upwards. So if you do end up um, squeezing them too hard above the saddle uh, you can do them quite a bit of uh, damage and, and they may end up uh, ruining the remainder of your worms. Uh, obviously if you're grabbing them below the saddle um, they're, they're a little bit more robust and you're less likely to cause any issues. Right, so I hope that helps. Perhaps you could let me know how you get on um, and uh, what fish you catch. Uh, there is really not a fish that swims that um, that isn't uh, catchable on these things uh, as long as they're big enough to take them. And if, if they're not big enough, you can even uh, fish small sections of them. Um, but super efficient. These ones are going to end up chopped up. Um, I'll probably put 50 worms chopped up over, over each rod over the next couple of nights um, in an attempt to uh, to attract some eels toward my uh, toward my hook bait